Friggin' right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to the vlog. Today I am brewing the biggest beer that we have made in Harrison's Brewery so far. It's that big, I can only do a 400 litre batch. So I'm afraid I've pretty much collected all the work I need to there. That's because I couldn't fit enough grain into the mash tun to do a 500 litre batch. It's going to be a West Coast IPA and uh, it's a big hitter hopefully coming out at eight percent anyway i'm coming over here because i want to show you these uh <laughs> these fermenters and what beer is in them whilst i'm also doing a little bit of labeling for the uh proof of concept oh uh, it's not showing at the minute it's having a little bit of a upset but we've got this uh Horn and Dark Kvirk Bjorn yeast in here. It's fermenting at 32, 33 degrees C. And oh my days, it is going absolutely wild. In fact, I pitched the yeast yesterday. It's not been 12 hours, uh, 24 should I say. It's not been 24 hours. And uh, well, I might have to swap hands for this. Check this out going wild look at that in fact it's nearly finished and if you could smell it oh my god it's tangerine orange all the good stuff so if I quickly show you in this one let's just get that phone case out of the way there we go that is the Bernie Sanders yeast doing his thing happy with that and in here we've got the lager yeast, as expected, bottom fermenting, so it's got bubbles in the middle. And then here, I'm going to struggle to lift this now, we've got the uh, coconut. He's just doing his thing in there with some lovely US 05, so 2,000 litres of beer ready to go in can here. And this bad boy. This 8% West Coast IPA will be going in there as well. Bear in mind, this is one bitter mofo coming out at over 100 IBUs, whereas those two over there, being New England style IPAs, are gonna be a completely different kettle of fish. So just to carry on from yesterday's vlog, today's now the next day, I've been home, had done, and I've come back in. So we're going to do another brew day today and uh, at the same time we're going to can some beer out of this tank. So this is the best bitterer, best bitter recipe and uh, we're going to put all that in tin, in cans and uh, fill this tank here. Uh, today as well is going to involve a few other little jobs, we're going to have to go into the pub we're going to have to empty some of the beer lines yet again because today marks the first day of the United Kingdom's second national coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic lockdown. Oh, isn't it fun, boys and girls? Yes, it certainly is. So without further ado, I'm going to go upstairs and prepare a recipe and uh, also, I think... Looking at this, I'm ready to prepare another starter for the Kolsch yeast. That looks to me like it's finished. Once again for the second time. Don't you just hate it when you forget to hit the record button. So I'm up here on some steps so I can mix the mash tun because we have, as you can see, a pretty full vessel. So today's brew is the porter, or a variation thereof, and well, it's one of the biggest grain bills that we have, because it's mashed in at 69 degrees, so there's a lot of unfermentables in there, just getting rid of that dough ball, and uh, yeah, it's really, can be quite tricky to just get an even temperature throughout the mash, because well, to give you an idea, I'll put my hand there, that's how deep it is. So let's bring this out. 
There we go, that's how deep it is. It's a metre deep, this mash tun. And uh, it's pretty much 40 millimetres from the rim. We've got Gemma over there weighing out two and a half kilos of El Dorado and two and a half kilos of Citra hops to go into the Kvirk New England IPA, which I'm not surprised to say, but uh, I'm certainly taken back by it. Has finished fermenting in uh, 12, 24, 36 hours. 36 hours, less than two days. As you can see, oh, you can't because it's not flashed up again, but it's, it was reading around uh, an SG of one, which isn't right because I think it's being bounced around quite a bit. The tilt is being bounced around quite a bit by the fermentation activity. But I want to get up here when Gemma pulls this lid off. Do you want to pull it off, Gem? <laughs> That's all right. You have to really snatch it up, you struggle. You have to go quickly, there we go. Slide it back, watch that pipe. Oh my God. There's some heat. Oh, it almost smells like a dodgy homebrew. <clears throat> There's some CO2 in there as well. Mm. Well, you got the brow sole then over there. I just need to get it. Yeah. Okay, so let's start putting some of these hops in. So, if you look at the size of the bubbles coming up, you'll see that she's <laughs> almost boiling away. She's definitely, definitely still fermenting there. So this is a jug full of El Dorado or Citra. I'm not sure which. This is a crazy dry hop schedule for this beer. And uh, with it still fermenting away, I'm assuming we get a little bit of bio transformation in here as well. But it just looks balmy. I've never brewed a beer at this temperature before. There's a lot of fruitiness coming off of it just from the yeast itself. So I'm told that that accompanies and even works with the aroma of the hops. So we're just a few points from terminal gravity here. So I'm hoping it doesn't blow too much of this lovely hop aroma out of the fermenter. There's the tilt over there, look. Struggling to, uh, struggling to stay afloat under all this activity and hop. Right, Gemma's got a little bit of uh, brow sol pea, which is a vegan friendly finings. Just tip it straight in, Gem. It'll, without a doubt, get mixed. Yeah, you can take that. Let's put these other two tubs of hot pellets in. I think if we come back to this in 10 minutes time, all these hops are gonna be kind of under the liquid because of the amount of activity that's going on whereas normally these would be floating on the surface for the next day or two and I'd have to come back incrementally and kind of push them underneath the surface of the liquid but looking at that it's almost like they're boiling away it's just fizzing away they're going to be just pushed to the sides and then gradually taken under god you can feel the heat coming off it can't you Gem? 31.1 degrees centigrade is what this beer's fermenting at. That yeast sure is a beast. We'll definitely be using this again, provided it tastes nice. We've just been listening to this, so I'm just gonna see if the mic will pick it up. I'm gonna go in and just stand here quietly. 